So, I remember when you came to my school in London, ten years ago or so? Yeah, something like that. Is it that long? I think it has been that long. (laughs) I remember watching what you were doing with the children with autism that you were there to see. Um, And just thinking, that looks okay, I like that. I like what he's doing, it looks like they're enjoying it, it looks like play for them. But what is this thing really, intensive interaction? It was new to me when you came in, didn't know much about it. Obviously, we've been working together for a while now, so I know more about it now. But for people who are just tuning in and seeing this for the first time, can you describe intensive interaction yeah. for me in a couple of sentences? <laughs> yeah, a couple of sentences. Yeah, that's one of, that's one of the exercises that I give to uh, people on the coordinator course. You know, can you, can you describe, well, I say to them, can you describe intensive interaction in one paragraph? and have a kind of practiced paragraph where you can easily verbally explain it to people quickly. Yeah. So intensive interaction is it's a teaching and learning approach for people who have severe learning difficulties and or autism. And it's a teaching and learning approach for communication. Uh, it teaches what we might call the fundamentals of communication. And these are broadly the communication attainments that in usual development come before and lead and build towards later speech and language, symbolic communication. Um, And the approach is a very practical, very lively, very dynamic kind of teaching and learning approach where the main instrument, the main tool, the main resource is the teacher person, face, voice, body language, presence. Um, and the teaching and the learning takes place during free-flowing, fun-filled, usually very enjoyable, dynamic interactions where basically the, the learner person learns how to interact by interacting with somebody who's already good at it. <laughs> Talk a bit more about the learning and the outcomes and what you're trying to get them to learn. What are you trying to teach or develop yeah. in these sessions? Yeah, the fundamentals of communication. Um, the fundamentals of communication are things like, I mean, especially for instance, with many learners who have autism, the first step, the very first step, is to learn how to enjoy being with another person even and, and to desire being with another person. And in fact, that's in usual development for developing babies when they're starting on being communicators during the first week even, that's their first step too. They have to first of all learn how to enjoy being with another person. And if things don't go right for them, they may not learn how to enjoy being with another person. So learning how to enjoy being with another person, learning how to have activities with another person, therefore learning, starting to learn how to pay attention, learning to connect, um, and gradually therefore, as activities developed, learning how to focus and concentrate and attend. And of course, in the process of that, engagement with the other person, learning how to take turns and exchanges of behavior very simply at first and then of course as time goes by more and more elaborate more and more sophisticated and complicated and as that is happening starting to learn what we might say is the really complicated stuff about being a communicator use and understanding of eye contact use and understanding of facial expressions use and understanding of non-verbal communication body language gesture sense of presence and of course In amongst and around all of that, learning to vocalise, learning to enjoy vocalising, learning to turn, take and communicate ever more meaningfully with vocalisations. And of course, gradually within and around the interactions, vocalisations building towards and becoming speech and language proper. Um, Like I say, in usual developments, these fundamentals build towards and develop into and become communication with signs and symbols, speech and language. But of course our concern is that that so many of the learners that we're working with are still at these very, very early stages of development and still need to learn the fundamentals of communication. And and it's worth observing as well, and I always try and emphasise this to people on courses, that 
the, I've got the fundamentals of communication as a, in, in a list up on the on the wall, and I'm saying, no, what we need to remember is that, of course, in usual development, this is the first learning. This this learning commences from day one. And actually, what what we work in our field and what we can observe with so many of the the learners that we work with, uh, in actual fact, this learning is so much the first learning, the fundamentals of communication. This learning is so foundational and underpinning. If a person doesn't make major headway with the learning of the fundamentals of communication, it, it's very difficult for that person to proceed to learning anything else because the learning of the fundamentals of communication is so foundational and underpinning. And I, I think I see teachers, particularly in special schools everywhere, really struggling with that reality. You know, they're, they're desperately trying to teach something to somebody. It'd be so desirable <laughs> if this person could learn this thing, for sure. You, you're finding this familiar, yeah? <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. And I remember that list as well, even though it's been 10 years, I can remember that list. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must have shown it to you, you about 200 times <laughs> since as well. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Um, but but so many so many of us we we so desire somebody mm. will learn this thing and it might it might take us a while to accept that perhaps this person this little person often is as yet nowhere near being able to learn.